Let's talk about one of the biggest myths out there with setting up to the golf ball. And a lot of times when players, especially if you're like myself, you're a little bit technical, you want to set up correctly, you think about getting everything square. I'm going to get my feet, my hips, my shoulders, everything square to my target line. And I'm going to do that by setting up with my shoulders pretty level. So now everything will be nice and lined up. My weight is 50-50. We're going to get to that in a minute here. But what this actually does, it causes you to line up a little bit open when your shoulders are level. So if I'm thinking about setting up with my shoulders level and my spine straight up and down, it's gonna typically lend me to weaker shots and probably a little bit more fade biased. What we actually wanna do, well, first let's talk about why this is incorrect or why this can skew our, our alignment. If my shoulders are level, since my, if my hands were on the same spot of the club, maybe that would work because then my shoulders and everything would be square. But where my hand, my right hand is farther down the club, you notice from the down the line view, when I, when I put my hand farther down, all of a sudden it opens my shoulders. So if I'm gonna keep my shoulders level, they're gonna be open when I grab my right hand farther down the club. So if you look at your address from down the line and it looks like your right forearm is a little above your left forearm, this could be something that you're doing. We actually wanna have a little bit of tilt of the shoulders. And if you can imagine they're set up like this, I'm gonna go ahead and bump toward the target and get my shoulders tilted back a little bit along with my spine angle. So if this is straight up and down, I'm gonna bump my spine a little bit away from the target. When I do this, I may feel like my hips close a little bit and I may feel like my shoulders close a little bit, which will compensate for the right hand being lower. And now when I set up, you can see that my shoulders look pretty square from this angle and now my forearms are pretty matched up. And this puts me in a great position to where now I can go ahead and swing pretty natural. I'm gonna come more from the inside rather than over the top, and I'm gonna have a lot more power and easily be able to hit that draw. Let's go ahead and check it out. There we go. Very, very straight, great ball flight, just a nice little draw. Couldn't hit that one a whole lot better than that. So that's piece number one. If we try to set up with those shoulders level, that could actually be something that we don't want to do. We want to get a little bit of tilt in there. Now, if you're having trouble doing that, what I want you to do is go ahead and feel like you get a little bit more weight on your right side. And that brings me to the second piece. A lot of times people want to set up with their feet perfectly balanced. Weight on as much on my right foot as my left foot. Now with the majority of players, I see them keep getting their weight to the right side way too late and then keeping it on their right side way too late so that when they start their downswing, they're not getting back to the left, they're not getting their weight in front, and just like you've seen with the pros and finishing in this nice balanced position coming all the way on through. Most players I see have a very late weight shift to the right. Once it gets to the right, it's there way too long, and then we end up falling back away from the target or having to really feel like you're working hard to get through the golf ball. It doesn't have to be that hard. Let me go ahead and show you a way that's gonna pair up with that first way too. So if I set up with my weight 50-50, my shoulders will be level. I'm gonna get a little more weight on my right side. I wanna feel like I'm probably 60% on the inside of my right foot at address. That's gonna help me get that tilt that we just talked about. Now the reason I like to start with my weight on my right is when you're studying what they call pressure plates and ground force reaction, I know it's, it sounds like it's a, a lot of science going on there, but it can be boiled down very simple. When they study the best players in the world, what they find is the weight is most to the right about right here in the swing. So when your club's parallel to the ground to when your left arm is parallel to the ground, that's about as far of a weight shift to the right as you're gonna get. From there, it actually begins to shift back to the left as you're completing your backswing. So as my arms and hands are still swinging back, I'm actually already starting to get to my left side. That's what allows you to get to your left side through contact and then swing all the way on through. So the tr key is something that's kind of counterintuitive. If I want to get to the left easier, I need to actually start with more weight on my right side. So here's what I'm going to feel. I'm going to feel like I put a little pressure on my right side to start with, probably 60% right side. It may be a bit of an exaggeration, but I'd rather it be right too early than not early enough. So I'm gonna start with it there. That's gonna help me with my, my tilt that I want to get me from the inside and get a nice draw. And then from there, I'm gonna feel like my first move is to press the inside of my right foot into the ground. Imagine there's something under your foot and you're gonna press it into the turf. 
if the ground was a little bit soggy, you're really gonna be able to push it in there and almost dent the ground a little bit. That's my first move. Then from there, as soon as I press it into the ground, I wanna think about getting left and then swinging down. So I'm starting right, I press, just like this, press, and then I go left, swing down to my good full finish. So you'll notice with myself, I even have a trigger. My left toe will start to come off the ground a little bit. I don't even realize I do that now, but that helps me to kind of press into that, that right side to start. So let's go ahead and try another one here. Again, feeling like I'm already starting on my right side, getting my weight left, then I make my downswing. There we go. Nice rhythm back and through, had no problem getting through that golf ball, hitting a pretty good shot. Now finally here, I wanna talk about something that I wish I'd done a long time ago. I was always taught to really keep a lot of flex in this right leg and to kind of restrict my hips as I'm making my backswing. So my hips don't move very much, my right leg stays flexed at a dress and stays flexed the entire backswing. Now if you really wanna hit with some easy power, what you wanna do is go ahead and feel like when you get that pressure into the right foot like we just talked about, go ahead and let that right leg straighten up a little bit. That's different than a sway. This is a sway where I'm letting my hips move. This is me letting my right leg straighten a little bit. What ends up happening is as I press into the ground and let my right leg straighten, look how that gets my hip going way back. I can really get a lot of hip turn when I do that. If I keep this knee flexed as I put pressure into it, I'm getting almost no hip turn at all. So as you start to transfer your weight to the right early, go ahead and let that knee straighten out a little bit. Get those hips turning. The more those hips turn, the more easy power that you're gonna have. So notice how on this swing, my right leg straightens a little bit on the back swing to allow me to get a bigger hip turn and just get a whole lot of easy power from it. There we go, nice and straight. Another good drive there. So when I restrict this leg, I can't get that turn my hips won't rotate. When I don't rotate my hips, my shoulders and my arms don't rotate. If you feel really stiff, that could be something that's causing you a lot of problems. Now I actually find that it's technique related if you're struggling with distance and you're struggling to get a bigger turn, especially for players who are maybe getting up a few years in age or players like myself that are just naturally pretty stiff. I always thought that I couldn't make a very good turn and then I found out that there are some tricks to being able to unlock your body that players that look very flexible are doing. Number one, like we talked about, to get those hips moving, that right leg has to straighten. If you keep that right leg locked, no way to get the hips moving. But there's also secrets on how to get your shoulders to turn and how to get those arms to wind up. I'm actually gonna play one of my very best videos talking about how to free up your swing, get that loose, free, powerful swing that you deserve and unlock your body so that you can make that really good turn. I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in just one second. All you need to do to see that full video is go ahead and click the card that pops up somewhere here on your screen. Don't worry if you don't see that card, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. I can't wait to show you how to free up your body. Let's go ahead and get started right now. Most of the instruction out there today is killing you of your power. The things that they're telling you to do can make you hit it shorter and worse than that, not even any more consistent. I'm gonna go over some of the real secrets to powerful, consistent golf in this video. Let's go and get started. So here's some of the keys into making that happen. If you wanna incorporate this in your swing, let me break it down exactly what you should do. Number one, let's focus on the belt buckle. This is another big misconception. I wanna keep that belt buckle facing the ball so I can really stretch out my midsection and really get loaded up. I'm not a big fan of that. That's really gonna kill your distance. In your backswing, I wanna feel like that belt buckle rotates to the right and you really let your hips and legs be loose. Notice how my legs are moving here. I'm not trying to keep those rigid and tight or I'm really just taking all the speed out of my swing. All right, so on that one, I really felt like I let my belt buckle rotate back. And a good key to this is feel like your knees are loose. Feel like when you make your back swing. Piece number two, let's go ahead and rotate our shoulders. When I let my lower body rotate, my upper body can rotate a lot better also. So if I let my hips move, my shoulders will move more. So here, once I've got my hips working well, I'm gonna add to that my shoulders making a big rotation. On average, on the PGA Tour, players are getting about 120 degrees of shoulder rotation. I don't see hardly anybody getting less than 90 degrees. So it starts with the hips, knees nice and loose, allow the belt buckle to rotate, and then from there, 
So those are two really big keys. But here's the truth. There's one thing, and if you don't do this correctly, nothing else is gonna work.